Hello everybody and welcome to another exciting hype ranking video for the Scarlet Keys. I'm Justin from Playing Board Games if you don't know who I am. Um, and if you did not see the first video, I as well as my chat from twitch.tv slash playing board games are going to be ranking our hype level for the cards in the Scarlet Keys box on uh, a rating from 0 to 5. Or yeah, 0 to 5. I think it's, it's one to five. I, I didn't put zeros in there. Um, and then next year, uh, once Scarlet Keys is sunsetting, like they don't really sunset sets for this game, but like once it's been a year out, I want to look back and see how my thoughts on the cards have changed and if, uh, if at all. I'm curious to see. Because one of my favorite things to do in Arkham Horror the Card Game is learn more about the game and continue to discover new things and constantly challenge myself and my own ideas of what I know about the game. Uh, chat is going to rate as well because I think once it'll be fun to see how the comparisons are. Now remember chat rating is the average of all the ratings of all these cards so they're going to skew higher because chat they're just more positive. They're more positive than I am. They haven't become jaded like I have for everything else in my life. I think that's all I need to say. Oh, uh, no, I will say, by the time that you've watched this video, uh, and the time I'm recording it, the Scarlet Keys box is already in some people's hands. Up here in Canada? Not yet. Not yet. So, um... And, um... It's... This is still just kind of theory crafting for me because I actually haven't seen any of these cards in practice. But we're going to dive in and we're going to get this show on the road. I'm going to start the poll. We have uh, Carson Sinclair. This is the spicy, controversial investigator from this box. There has been a lot of discourse, by the way, Mano Malice, thank you so much for the follow, welcome to the goddamn table. There's been so much discourse on Carson Sinclair, and a big reason for that is that we were missing his deck building for a very, very, very long time. Uh, we finally got it when the box was out, so let's see Mr. Carson Sinclair. We have uh, twos across the board and six six for a soak. You may take an additional action during your turn, which can only be used on the below action ability. Action. Choose another investigator at your location. They immediately take an action as if it was their turn. Limit once per round for each investigator. Elder sign effect plus zero. Draw a card. You may resolve this effect anytime another investigator at location resolves their elder sign effect. Ah, uh, that is a very strong elder sign effect. That is a very good elder sign effect. Like, that's really, really powerful. Um... At deck creation, choose Seeker, Mystic, or Survivor. It's the uh, the Mandy, uh, Tony deck buildings, and Gloria. So you get up to 10 level 0, 1 events or skills from your chosen secondary class. Um, two copies of As You Wish, which is uh, commit to a, three wild symbols. Commit only to a skill test being performed by the investigator. If this test exceeds, the performing investigator draws one card. If it fails, you draw one card. Uh, selfless to a fault, revelation, put it into play in your threat area at the end of your turn. If you do not commit at least one skill, one card to a skill test performed by another investigator this turn, take one horror and shuffle selfless to a fault to your deck. So, I've read the card, now let's talk about Carson. So, he is a support investigator, which means, yes, Blue Sapphire, his ability does nothing in solo mode. Luckily, that was mitigated by the box having an extra investigator, so solo players still get five investigators as per normal in their box. And, of course, you know that there is going to be people who challenge mode true solo Carson. That's just inevitable with this one. Um, and I think Carson uh, got a worse rap than what he actually should be looked at. Uh, Travis on Wednesday said that a true Carson deck is going to be good, but it's not going to be particularly fun to play because it's going to kind of be like, um, like Kelvin, where there's kind of like really like one way you have to build it. Cause you have to build your survival, you have to build your support, and then you have to build your testless do nothing cards. Sorry, do something cards, not do nothing cards, do something cards. Um, so this guy is gonna have like a very similar style of deck however i do think that carson is stronger than the community is making him out to be he's uh not gonna be like mandy level broken but 
we don't really need to worry about an investigator being Mandy level broken or not, right? Like, that's kind of not what we want to see in this game. We would rather there be investigators who are kind of just, you know, fine. Chad, to no surprise, uh, resolved around a three for this guy. We had two ones, two threes, and two fives for the votes for, uh, for Carson. Uh, I'm looking forward to trying out Carson. I do think that he has a lot of tools in his kit that he can take advantage of. And his Elder Sign effect, as I said previously, is very strong. I am not bothered that he cannot be played in true solo because I have been asking for a long time for an investigator that plays um, that plays support and like is a pure support investigator. I think it's a design space that needed to be explored in the game. I think it needed to be explored in the game because realistically, um, there's very unlikely, like, I would even be okay with them exploring design space that, can, that like, it benefits true solo for an investigator. Um, and I think that it's, I think that the, the, it, it an investigator that's good in true solo is still going to be good in, in multiplayer, but the same is not true uh, opera, uh, opposite, right? So, like, I think this design stage should be explored, but I think that it's not going to be like, you can't play this investigator in multiplayer games. Like, Carson can't be played in true solo, but he still could. He would just, like, be a blank investigator card, and that's not really great. Uh, and also, like, I think that he actually... I, there's uh, some autofill token in chat is saying that he's good in high player counts probably, but looks on fun. I think that's also not necessarily true. Because, um... I, a lot of people are kind of just in this plane where, um... With Carson, you are just an action machine for other investigators. And I don't think that's necessarily true. Because I think you can still build a good deck that you can take actions on your turn. And I think the weakest Carsons are from the players who are too stubborn to explore Carson's space and just use him as an action machine. I think Carson has the tools in this game to become a very good uh, investigator for getting clues and all that. And even like dealing Tesla's damage, like mono a mono, just punching someone. Um, but I don't think this whole idea of just action machine Carson is the correct way of looking at Carson. Because I think that is very boring because you are, um, you are kind of just putting your own self in a box for it, right? Um, now, with all that said, what am I giving Carson? I'm going to give him a four. I think he is my least excited about uh, investigator in the box. Uh, but if you're not doing that, why play Carson? If you're not just, like, giving actions to other players, like, if I, if, so, like, you're asking me as a legitimate question, if I'm not just spending all my actions just moving around and giving other people other actions, why am I playing Carson? Well, what about, like, my other whole part of my deck building, right? Like, what about, you know, like, taking cards from the Mythos deck and putting it to other people while also giving my Seeker an additional action for the turn? I think, like, as I said, I think you're living in a box if you're on this idea that there's only one way to play Carson. And I think that that is a detriment to what Carson is actually capable of doing because I think Carson is much better, not amazing, but I think much better than the community's given him credit for. He is still, I think, the investigator I'm least excited about for the box, so I'm only giving Carson a four for my hype rating. All right, let's get this show moving on to the first custom customizable card of the day, which is custom modifications. Get the poll going, and then let's read the card. Uh, attached to a firearm asset you control, limit one per asset. It's a three cost. A reaction when you reveal a non autofail uh, chaos token while attacking with attached asset. Exhaust custom modifications, cancel the chaos token, and return it to the bag and reveal a new one. Act, uh, in a one box, notch sight. If you form an attack with an attached asset against an enemy, engage with another investigator and fail. You deal no damage. Extended stock is two boxes. You get plus two fist and deal, uh, with it while attacking with the attached asset. Counterbalance after you attach an upgrade uh, card to other than custom modifications to attached asset. Draw a card. Leather grip. Custom modifications get minus one cost and gain fast. Play only during your turn. Extended magazine. 
After an ammo is spent from or placed on an attached asset by another event, place one ammo on attached asset, and then quick silver bullets if you succeed by three or more while attacking with attached asset. This attack deals plus one damage. So I'm going to have to just get my, my own personal bias out of the way immediately. I don't like playing with guns. I do not like firearms. So um, uh, my height for this card is just by its very nature lower. Like I see gun, I say no thank you. It's not what I want to be doing. Um, so let's let's put that away and let's actually like look at what this card can can do. So I think that the text on it is good. Like if it's if it's, you know, you, you cancel like a minus four and return it to the cup. But like realistically, you're gonna use this most often for boss fights or particularly bad symbol tokens. So I think the reaction effect on this card is kind of just fine, right? It's kind of just fine. Um, now let's look at the upgrades. Perform an attack and with an investigating fail, you deal no damage. That's not great. Is it worth one experience? Potentially, maybe. Extend the stocky a plus two fist. I think that's good. I think it kind of just eats into the um, eats into the part of it that cares about the symbol reveal. So I think that kind of just like negates the text on the one part of the card. Counterbalance after you attach an upgrade other than custom modifications to attached asset, draw a card. That seems cool. That seems cool. Leather grip. I mean, fast and mine is cheaper is also pretty nice. Uh, extend a magazine after ammo is spent from or placed on attached asset. And okay, just reloading. The quicksilver bullet is really nice, right? Quicksilver bullet seems really nice. Uh, I'm gonna give this card a three. I don't think it's that great. It doesn't interest me. I think it's just fine. Even, like, looking at all the things, it just makes your guns better, but, you know, I think you're probably just better off even just loading your gun with more bullets or all that other stuff. Chad, however, loved this card. They gave it uh, a 4.4 out of 5 for their hype rating. That's five fives from Chad. That's pretty sick. All right, Obsidian Bracelet. Wow, only one card to read. I am the luckiest boy alive. Uh, three cost asset takes up the hand slot. Obsidian Bracelet may be only assigned damage and or horror dealt by treachery effects. Obsidian Bracelet may be assigned damage and or horror dealt to other investigators at your location. Soaks for three and three. Um... I don't think this card is that good. I think this card is here for level zero Carson Sinclair. So he doesn't just die to rotting remains. Um, I am very unlikely to ever play this card. Because if it didn't take up a hand slot, uh, it took up like an accessory slot, then we'd be talking. But I think the fact that I am playing this with my... Um, uh, I'm, I'm holding this bracelet in my hand. I'll never get past that with this card. I don't, Obsidian Bracelet does not excite me, and I don't think it's gonna be that exciting. I'm gonna give it a two. It's on the lower end for me for hype. All right. And chat, you gave it a three. You are as excited about Carson Sinclair as you are for Obsidian Bracelet. I'm not going to throw shade, but there's a little bit of shade there. There's a little bit of shade. I think it's good in Carolyn and Vincent too. Maybe Tommy, maybe even Daniela. Daniela's not fucking failing her treachery test. This is only on treacheries, right? Like, Daniela wants to hold weapons in her hands. <laughs> like, I don't get that at all. Like, she, like... But it's for other people too? That, that doesn't matter! It's a garbage card, and it's a bad card. It's a two. It's a bad card. It's not good. I'm sorry. I'm not going to sit here and have people defend Obsidian Bracelet. Like I said, maybe next year I'll be like, Obsidian Bracelet actually has a great combo with this card. But right now, Obsidian Bracelet, it's trash, and I don't want to play it. 
Bolus. Nickel Bolus. One cost event commits for a fist and a foot. It's a tactic. Evade. After attempting to, uh, attempt to evade using fist instead of foot, if you succeed and the enemy is non-elite, attach Bolus to it. Attached enemy gets minus one evade value after attached enemy moves exhausted. Uh, Bolus is a fun card. I think this card's really funny. I don't think it's like particularly incredible. Um, but I do think that it is uh, an enjoyable card uh, that will eventually get cut or used in uh, as sort of like a metagaming building your deck, sideboarding your deck, so to speak. Um, I'm going to give this one a two and a half, I think, for my hype rating for this card. I'm, I'm moderately excited about on uh, Bolus, but I think that overall... Apart from, like, rare situations where you're playing a meme deck or you are in the Forgotten Age, the, it's better to still just kill enemies, right? It's, it's, it's just gotta, you just gotta kill the enemies instead. Killing is still just better than evading. Chat gave this one a 4.2. <laughs> Holy cow, chat! Alright, okay. All right, four point two. There was five. There, sorry, there were six. I got actually this number wrong. It's even higher. No, it's a four point two. There were six fives there. That's all. There's a lot of hype for nickel bolus. For the hype, not goodness. I mean, it's. I'm. I'm judging these like even though it's hype, I get hype for how good a card is. So I am. I am assuming that you guys are think that this card is better than Sar Carson Sinclair. That's what I'm looking at with my uh, analytical scientific stuff that we got going on here. Breach the door! Hmm. Alright, two cost event. Uh, commits for a book and a fist. It's an insight tactic. Least test fist one. If you succeed, attach breach the door to your location with one resource on it for each point you succeeded by as leads. Reduce attached location shroud by one for each lead on breach the door. Um, I think it's fine. I think it's a fine card. Um, honestly, I think that it's still okay. Like, I see some people in chat, like, being there's no limit on this card, and especially, I love this card, especially in synergy with test zero clue getting. Um, I still just think, though, that you're probably just better off playing, like, other cards. <laughs> I still think the card's just fine. I think it's cool. It's flavorful. I think that this is still just, like, a really fun, flavorful card, but I don't think it's particularly um, hyping me up in how powerful it's going to be. If you succeed by seven, you get to get clues when no monster's out. It's true. That is true. For that one location, you get to do that. That is true. You get to get three clues at the cost of one card and three a and four actions. So, like, in four actions, I get to get three clues at a test of zero. Like, you know, that's not great. Because your seeker can just do that. Uh, I'm going to give this one a two and a half as well. I think it's just fine. Just a fine card. Let's see what chat says. Chat, there is something in your water. That's all I'm going to say. 4.1. 4.1. Chat is hyped for Breach the Door. All right, let's keep this show going, shall we? It is pretty great in Guardian, though. Isn't it unfair to compare Secret Clue Tech to non Secret Clue Tech? Yeah, I'm not talking about True Soul. I'm talking about, like, my hype base. My hype baseline is three players, right? Like, that's what I play most commonly. So, I am judging these cards with three players in mind. And in three players, there are probably better cards in your deck than this, right? Even if I don't have a Seeker, I have a Mystic, or I have a Rogue who can get me a bunch of clues. And I think that one card to make other tests easier is not particularly exciting to me. Like, I'm not saying the card's bad, chat. I think the card's just fine. Like, to me, 2.5 is a card that I'll put in my deck for, like, a, I'll put in my level 0 deck and then cut eventually for something better. It's a good, it's like a fine card. It's, like, even good in cases. But it's not particularly um, interesting to me. And I don't think its power is um, fantastic, right? 
All right, bestow resolve. This card's neat. This card's neat. <sighs> okay, two cost, two experience, ritual asset. Commits for a brain. Uses four charges. During the skill test performed by an investigate location or connecting location, as a lightning bolt, you can spend one charge. Commit a non-weakness card from your hand to that skill test, treating all of its icons as wild. So, I think that this card is um is good i think this is a good card um it's the thing that makes this card much better is that it's connecting location as well so basically just four times you can commit any card as wilds to someone right it also is as um as tyler in chat is saying it lets you commit two cards to someone's test a rule i still wish was not work around well because it's now so complicated to explain this to new players uh, and it probably would just be better if it was just a hard thing of just you can only commit one card it would just be so much nicer and smoother and easier um it just would be better for the game if there weren't these weird workarounds but i think it, it does make the card even better you can commit multiple cards to someone's test I think the windows where you need to commit some multiple cards to someone tests is lower than like it's needed. So I think this card is made only more played for like the support style. I think it's a good card. I'm going to give it a three and a half for my hype rating. I think it's, I think it's neat and I'm excited to play with it. Jack gave it a 3.8, 3.8. Nice. It's a neat card. It's a neat card. It's good at level two since many can play. I agree. I think the design on the card is like they 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 really nailed that one. I think it's really good. Oh boy, guard dog three. Moment of silence for Daniela Reyes because she cannot play this card. Uh, three cost, two experience. Soaks for four and two. That's a lot of soak. Uh, as a lightning bolt exhaust guard dog, engage an enemy at your location. That enemy attacks you. As a reaction, when an enemy when an enemy attack deals damage on a horde to guard dog, deal one damage to the attacking enemy. Um, oh, did I say guard dog three? Yeah, no. The, uh, sorry, I've I've seen next boxes. Spoilers, my mistake. Uh, sorry, guard dog two. Um, I think it's a good upgrade. I think I think it's a very I think like guard dog is a very good ally, and having an upgrade that you can um, that you can just like don't have to take a card out of your deck and just make him do better. Uh. I think, yeah, level 3 is red-blue, and it also puts aura tokens into play from the top card of your deck. Um, sorry, I, I spoiled the card. I'm so sorry. I should not have spoiled it. I'm so sorry. But that, that's the level 3 guard dog. Um, I think the card's good, though. I think that it's... Uh, is not even an attack of opportunity, so survival knife. Uh, I believe that the survival knife is only during the enemy phase, when an enemy attacks you during the enemy phase. I think Guard Dog is a good card. I'm going to give it a three and a half. It doesn't make me want to change the game or play a specific archetype. I do wish it was uh, in... I do wish Daniela could play it, though. If Daniela could play it, that would be uh, primo. That would be very nice. 4.7 for Guard Dog. Chat is excited about the dog. It's a good card. It's a good card. Counterpunch still works. There we go. That would be sick. Okay. And for the card we never needed, Handcuffs 2. Okay. One cost, fast. Two experience. Commits for a fist and a foot. Item police is an action. If handcuffs is not attached to an enemy, evade. Uh, use only on a humanoid enemy. The evasion attempt uses fist instead of foot. If you succeed, remove all doom from the just evaded enemy and attach handcuffs to it. If the S enemy is not elite, it cannot ready and doom cannot be placed on it. Um... So obviously, I think Handcuffs is a really good tech card, right? Uh, I've seen Handcuffs now handcuff enough Deep One Bulls that I am a believer in Handcuffs, right? Um, however, unless, like, Scarlet Keys... Um, unless Scarlet Keys has a lot of Doom on enemies, which they particularly might, right? Um it becomes better, right, for outside of just... Because the only one that I can see, like, the removing Doom from the enemy is probably 
Forgotten Age. Everyone knows the guy, right? Everyone knows the guy. Um, but I think that for the idea of using it on your weaknesses, like um, the Tom, uh, whatever big big bones Tony, whatever um, Nathaniel Cho's weaknesses, Tommy Chuck. Boy, I don't know his name. It's it's slipped my mind. Tommy Bones, and then Daniela's uh, the Blowjob Brothers. Um, this is just better at like level zero is still fine. Tommy Malloy, there we go, there we go. Um, it's uh, I think that it's like this card's still f like fine. I don't want to give it like because like I think I'm actually like kind of low on it because I don't really see the upgrade as like particularly necessary. Um, so I'm going to give it a two and a half. I just think that this is one of the few cases where I think the level zero version is just like good enough for what you need to be doing for the game. Right. And I, I, I'm not saying that I, if I have handcuffs and I had th uh, two experience, I would ever, uh, I would not like go into this. Right. But I'm just like not excited to upgrade into this card. So there my hype is just is just kind of there. I do wish this card was something else. I do think I do wish this card was something else though. I would absolutely upgrade it for that. Yeah, but Tasty Toast, you you want like 80 experience in your deck. So you know you don't value experience like I do. You just want like 80 experience in your deck just because you could have every card be five and then you'd be like, I'm the best. And you are the best. That is true. That doesn't make you the best. But, you know, I, I value my experience a little bit more than, you know, just doing that. I mean, fast is huge. Fast is not worth two experience for what you want handcuffs to be doing. Handcuffs is you just play it when you have your off action, when you're a fighter. And then you just, you know, you use it when you need it. Like, you can hold it back in your hand, yeah, and you can use it as, like, a reaction. But I still think that's not, like, it's not worth two experience. It's just not. There's better things you can do with your, your money. Prepared for the worst. Two. I dare you to use this in Circle Undone. I used regular handcuffs in Circle Undone, and they were they were fine. Like I'm, I'm saying that like the uh I, I just think that they're what it does, level zero handcuffs is fine, right? Alright, event. Zero cost, tactic. Choose an investigator location. That investigator should top nine cards of their deck for a weapon asset. Adds to their hand or plays it and shuffles their deck. Paying its resource cost. Yeah, this one's also not too... Um, this synergizes with old shotgun. Oh, that's kind of sick. That's kind of neat. That's kind of neat. Um, I think that like it's nice that this the upgrade version eats the action and also eats the plus one resource cost that level zero prepared for the worst has but i do think that this one is still just kind of not absolutely necessary we're at the point now where i'm not even like running prepared for the worst anymore um that the um now that I'm not even, like, really running prepared for the worst of more, it's kind of just, like, it's been eaten by backpack, right? Like, backpack is kind of what I want. Um, I do think that it's kind of just not great. Now that we've deciphered that hype rating is actually power level rating, I'm now scared to pick five on anything. No, you know what? It's you, you vote for how, vote what's true to your heart. That's the best the best way you can do this, right? Just vote. Don't care what I say. I'm just some guy on the internet. Just like, you know, you are just some people on the internet. We're just sharing fun, fun facts and opinions. I'm going to sass you because I'm a sassy boy. My nickname is literally from my parents, Judgy. Pa Travis and Bryn call me that sometimes. Uh, it's my job. I'm here to judge and throw shade. That's my job as a streamer. But you follow your heart, because if you are hyped for Guard Dog, be hyped for Guard Dog, goddammit. I don't see myself upgrading Prepared for the Worst that often, so I'm going to give it a two and a half. No, now we're talking. This one is a really good, um, a really good card. <laughs> this is a, this is a nice card. This is like an upgrade that I think is like noticeably better. All right. Zero cost, four experience, commits for brain book book. Uh, ever vigilant, 
Tactic, one at a time, investigate a location as a group may play up to four assets in total from their hands, reducing the resource cost of each by one. I'm going to give it, um, I'm going to give it a five, I think. I'm going to think I might give this a five. I might give it a four and a half. Um, I'm going to see what happens. Uh, I'm going to like see as I talk through this here. Um, so the reason why this card is so good is because you realistically only need to run one of it. That's good. The other reason why it's so good is because level one Ever Vigilant is good enough for the time being. And then by the time you get to scenario um, six, seven, or eight, when you have the experience, the extra two around to just get Ever Vigilant uh, four, it becomes really good, right? Because you're playing this with Stick to the Plan. Like, if you're not playing Stick to the Plan, you probably can do better things than Ever Vigilant, right? Because if you're... I mean, that might be not true if you're running just Ever Vigilant 4 and you skip Ever Vigilant 1. But, like, with Stick to the Plan, this card's a no-brainer, right? Um, it gives four actions to everybody at the table. So, like, this is, like, the first turn the Guardian's like, Yo, do you people have some, uh... Some cards to play, because let's freaking go. And then you do it, and everyone's like, you are the best person that's ever existed. Um, I think it's a great card. I'm, I'm going to go away from a 5. I'm going to go to a 4.5, just to give myself a little bit of room, because I'm not like... I don't think this is like breaking and entering, where I feel like it's going to... Um, um, it's going to like break it wide open. I, I think that this card is, is good. I think it's going to be very good. Like, it's it's a very good upgrade. It's very powerful. And it's going to be... It's, it's just a good card. It's just really good. And chat settled on a 3.4. <laughs> chat is more excited for prepared for the worst, too. Okay. All right, we are done with the Guardian cards, and we're going to the Seeker cards. We got the Section Tools. All right, two cost uh, asset takes up the hand slot. Item Tool Science commits for a foot in the classic Seeker way. After an enemy location is defeated, place one resource on this card as evidence. While the dissection tool has one or more evidence, you get plus one foot. Two or more, you get plus one fist. Three or more, you get plus one sanity. I'd run this in Roland, Joe, and Vincent and be happy about it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a good card. I'm going to give it a three. There's not much to say. I think the card is just good. I think it's a very nice card. I think it's, it's, it's a great mirror to Hawkeye Folding Camera. I do wish it mirrored a little bit more and gave damage instead. Um, I think that it's just a fun card. I do think, yeah, Autofill Token is very fair in saying that it's a tough sell because hand slots are competitive for characters that can make use of it. Uh, I can agree with that completely, and I can see it seeing less play because of that. That's why I'm going to give it more of a 3 than a 3.5. I'm with you 100% on that. I still think the card is, is cool, though. I think it's a fun card. I think it's going to be... I think it's it, overall it's going to play absolutely fine. 3.7 from chat. 3.7. Fighting Daryl can love this. Fighting Daryl's going to be he's Daryl is very, he's very strong. He's very strong. All right, we got Grim Memoir. Oh. Grim Memoir. Help! I can't write in the box. There we go. Let's keep this going. Alright, three cost. Asset takes up the hand slot. Item tome. Uses four secrets. Spend one secret. Investigate you plus. Get plus two book for this investigation. If you see by two or more, you may draw one card. Finally, after all these years, another good tome for Daisy's ability. If finally there's a card that is really good tome book get stuff. Um, I think the card is, uh, I think the card is obviously good, right? I think the card is, I think the card is good. Like, baseline, it's good. Um, downsides to the card, it costs three. Is three resources worth plus two book? And if you see by two or more, you may draw a card. 
I think it's good in like the early game, especially. Um, because like at level zero, I do think that it can potentially get outclassed in other seeker decks because the effect is ultimately just fine. And seekers have other ways of getting card draw to really take advantage of like they, they can take better advantage of this. Um, like, I think, for me, personally, I'm more excited to just run um, magnifying glasses in my hands, right? But I do think the card is very good. Um, and obviously, as Tactus is saying, a Rex new signature card, yeah, Rex loves this card. Um, I think the card's good, though. I'm going to give it a three and a half. I don't think it goes into the four territory for me, but I think the card's good. Um... But I don't think it's going to have, like, the staying power to last forever. And I, I pretty much really agree with what chat is saying. Chat's giving it a, apparently a 6 when I meant to give it... They give it a 4. I'm with... I, I could see it being a 4. For me, it's not there yet. But I, I can get behind that. I do get behind that. <sighs> Min's going to... Scavenging Min's going to love it. Scavenging Min's going to have a great time with it, probably. Okay. Bizarre Diagnosis. I wish I could just rerun a poll. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Zero cost event commits for two book. That's nice. Insight and Science. Place one of your clues in your location, then heal three damage from an investigator or ally asset at your location. Is Scavenging Min the strongest way to play here? Uh, I, honestly, I think each Min is good. I think, okay, sorry. With the new cards released in this box, I think Scavenging Min is... Uh, no, she can't play Old Key Ring. I do think that Scavenging... I think all Mins are good. All Mins are very good. Um, should have been fast? Um, I don't think it should have been fast just because of the synergy that this box comes with. If this was fast, you would it would net two actions, right? Um, I think that... The card is not exciting. I'm going to give it a two and a half. Three damage is a lot to heal. But I do think that this card definitely has a home in a place clues deck. And also in a, like a level zero place clue deck. Because I, I think that we can't discredit the two book that it commits for, right? Um, uh, but I think the card is still just kind of not particularly exciting i think it's fine though i think it's fine and check give it a 2.8 i'm down for that i'm down for that oh the practiced card anal sis What the heck does this card do? Skill practiced. Commits for a while. After revealing a chaos token for the skill test, you may place one of your clues on your location to cancel that chaos token. Return the chaos bag and reveal a new one. Um, It's fine. It's a good card. Um, Yeah, you can basically place all your clues down to just fish for the Elder Sign. You are right. Uh... I think, though, that it's, uh, I think that it's, like, I think, uh, well, what we said in our initial, uh, um, video, it does work with the autofail, it does. I think with, uh, with our original video where, um, it's just nice to have a practice skill that's not plan of action, even though this card, like, in theory could, is worse than plan of action in other ways, I'd still want to run this over plan of action. Uh, I'm going to give it. I'm going to give it a three. I think I'm more likely to... It, it'll Like, if I had this and Bizarre Diagnosis in the same deck, this would outlast Bizarre Diagnosis, right? Like, I think that's just fair. Should I give it a 3.2? I am. I'm down for that. This works in the Mythos phase. Oh, yeah. I don't see why I wouldn't. don't see why I wouldn't. Who likes science? We like science! Lab coat. Okay. Lab coat 
is a two cost one experience asset takes up the body slot which is not contested at all in yellow is there any body slot in yellow um one one when you would fail a skill test on a secret card by one or less exhaust lab coat you succeed by zero instead uh i think the card's fine i don't think it's particularly great um Uh, I think that it's, like, if you were running a lot of specific seeker, um, action, like, for example, fingerprint kit, for example, grim memoir, for example, uh, of seeker events that you investigate with, right? Then this card does go up on, in value, right? I think the card goes up in value there. Uh, do I think that this is an auto-include? No, by no means. Um, I think that the card is not as exciting as it reads, because as Tyler is saying, it's being restricted to tests on cards rather than just tests, which I think is a very good change. Um, I think that it's gonna get, uh, I don't think it's a two and a half. I'm gonna give it a three. I'm gonna give it a three. I think that the card's fine. I don't think it's going to be particularly. I don't think it's going to, like, pop anything open, you know? And check it at a 3.3. Like, I think it definitely... I think it definitely has this deck where it gets better, right? Like, you're going to know when your deck wants lab coat and when it doesn't want lab coat right and also we can also know that this card is going to synergize with kate winthrop right like she's going to have some sort of thing that matters about either taking tests on secret cards or like her assets going to be a secret card like it's of course you know um I just think that, yeah, I think when you know you're, and when you're, when this card is going to be good in your deck, it's going to be good. Like it's going to be like a 3.5 to potentially even a four for you. But I think overall it's not included in everything. So it's kind of just like a fine card. Guidance one. Zero cost, one experience event, commits for a brain and a wild. It's an insight. Choose another investigator location who has yet to take their turn this round. During their turn this round, the chosen investigator gets plus one to each of their skills and may take an additional action. Playing guidance does not provoke attacks of opportunity. So level zero guidance wasn't particularly exciting. And I guess also with Guidance, we need to ask the question. Is anyone outside of Carson going to play this? Harvey, Farsight could. Play with Guidance and Parallel Rolling or Fast Insights meant this was just a free action. That is sick, yeah. Yeah, if you have any way to make this card fast, it shoots up in value. I don't think that makes... the. I think, like... That's one of the things where the card itself gets better because of the other cards. So that like doesn't mean that Guidance is a good card. It means that the other cards um, are better. Uh, unfortunately, I mean, like, okay, let's be real. Four actions at plus one to each your skills is nice. Is it worth an action from someone else if you're not like Carson or playing it fast? Probably not. I'm going to give it a two. Guidance is still just, unfortunately, just Guidance, right? Just give it a 2.7. Yeah, it's just, it's just not good. All right, what do we got next? Oh, boy! He's here! And he's working on something bigger.
One cost, two experience, brain book, two, two, soak. Still some of the best soak rate in the freaking game. It's, it's crazy. When any investigator draws an encounter card from the encounter deck, exhaust Dr. William T. Mellison and place one of your clues on your location. That investigator draws another card from the top of the encounter deck. Choose one of those two cards to resolve, cancel, and discard the other. Um, I think that uh, this card is going to be good. <laughs> Controversial opinion time, chat. I think this card is a very good upgrade. William T. Maleson on his own was, uh, is like, he was fine. Like, he was playable. He was playable. He was outclassed because, like, Dr. Milan Christopher took his fucking, all the, like, he, like, put, he, like, fucking Edisoned him. Like, Tesla, like, like, took all credit for everything he did, right? Um, but the upgrade here is really nice. Uh, I can see that if you're playing any sort of clue deck, like a uh, clue placing on your location deck, it's going to be really good. Um, I can see this card being very good in clue placement Daryl Simmons, obviously, right? Because he has five book. He doesn't really need the book from... He has five book and a survivor card pool. So he doesn't really need the... Um, the money like some seekers might use. I'm going to give uh, William T. Melson a four. I think the card is great. I think it's a very good upgrade. It's very powerful. It gives you so much control over the mythos phase uh, for an action, essentially, right? For just an action. Chat, we agree. Four. Chat, you and I, we both said four. Wow. I don't think Gloria can run this card. Gloria can't play Dr. William T. Maleson. <sighs> Speaking of good cards for an archetype, holy crap. Press Pass. This card is really good. In its archetype. In its archetype. Four cost, accessory slot. After you spend one or more clues or place one or more clues in your location, exhaust... Press pass. You may take an additional action during this turn or your next turn if it's not currently your turn. Um, yeah, the spends clues is a little bit wild. I don't think this card needed the spends clues. The, re the reality is, though, is that, like... Okay, no, I can see it. I can see it in yellow. That Like, in non-yellow. Like, if you're just, like, a yellow main, um, it's probably fine to play because you're probably just going to spend clues, Right? I do think, though, that, like, it gets better in scenarios where you spend lots of clues. Like, for example, The Last King. If you want to put your first two experiences into this, that's really nice. But overall, this would really only net you um, three actions if you're not in the archetype. Which I don't think is worth two experience and four resources and an action. Um, but uh, if you're dropping clues on your location, the card is very strong. Like, it's very strong. It's kind of wild. Um... I really wish it did not say spend clues. I understand that was there to kind of take it out of the archetype, but it just becomes like even better <laughs> for when you're in the archetype, right? Um, I think press pass is very strong. I'm going to give it a four. I think the card's very good. I would be tempted to even go up to a five. If I, I think honestly, this might be one where this time next year, it is a five, right? 4.6 from chat. This is one of the best cards in the game in its archetype. I agree with that 100%. I agree with that 100%. The card is absolutely wild in its archetype. Fingerprint kit 4. Five cost. Two book. Item tool hand slot. Uses three supplies. Exhausted, spend a supply, you get plus two book. If you see, discover two clues, uh, two additional clues to your location. So, fingerprint kit is not my preferred play style, right? It's not what I do and want to do when I'm playing Arkham, right? Um, I also think that generally uh, seekers can get this rate without. Um, without needing to pay five for it. Right? Like, Seekers are very good at what they do. 
Uh, and I think that obviously this card can help. I think this card goes up in value for three and four players. Uh, this is also a card I'll probably never play. Right? Like, it's just... And I think the card's good. I'm going to give it a... Three and a half out of five. Because it is... I can't... Like, it, it's good. Like, the, the text on the card is good. The text in the top left is a little bit pricey. Five cost is very expensive. Like, I know Seeker have really good economy. But five is still a lot to put you back. Um, I think the card is... I, I don't think I'm ever going to play it, and I think that's just because it's my preferred playstyle to just, like, take advantage of other cards. But I will never be shocked if people do play it, because I think the card is good. Check gave it a 3.8. I'm down for that. Gray's Anatomy. So this one was actually spoiled... Before the box came out, but not by the time we did the previous video. Grey's Anatomy. Three cost, five experience. The Doctor's Bible. Commits for a brain, a book, and a wild. Item tome, takes by hand slot. As an action, choose a card your location and test book one. For each point you succeed by, choose one. The next time that card would be healed this round, heal plus one damage and horror. The next time that card would be dealt damage this round, deal plus one damage and to a maximum of three for each of them. I think that this card is neat. I think it has the potential to be very good. Yes, Carolyn and Vincent can use this. And honestly, I'll be real. Intuitively, I was like... I don't need... I, I wasn't confused. When there was that specification being like Carolyn and Vincent can use this card just because, to me, this card obviously reads that they can. And maybe that's just like a weird uh, brain thing I have that I'm doing. But to me, it seemed obvious. Absolutely obvious that this could be Ron and Carolyn and, uh, and Vincent. Um... It feels too much for XP, what it is doing. Uh, yeah. I do think, though, that, like, if... The the healing part of it is not that exciting to me, right? The plus one damage... This is a very good color pie, color pie for yellow to be able to deal damage. Because this card isn't dealing damage on its own. You need someone else to deal damage, right? But if you can just, like, you get a boss... And you're like, hey, the next time... I, I, here's three vicious blows, right? On one test, right? Um, it's just very good, right? Yeah, look at that. Super, Super Faye and I, we're saying the exact same thing right now. I like this card because it leans into a Seeker playstyle that I want for Seeker. They're not dealing damage. They're helping someone else deal huge damage. I think it is five experiences expensive, and I need to see it in action before I really, like, get, like, super into it. I also think that outside of the clue archetype, like the dropping clue archetype, this was a very good box for yellow cards where like they were kind of just like fine, right? Like they were fine to good. No like profanas in there, which is a nice, or eon charts, which is a nice change of pace. I'm going to give this guy a 3.5, I think, just because I think, I don't think on its own it's particularly spicy. But I do think the card is good. Should I give it a 3.3? Opportunity to tax them. Most bosses are massive. Uh, I think most bosses being massive is not as common as it once was. And if it, if it was, you can just like have your someone evade it. Because if you don't have a plan to evade uh, a boss enemy, you're all like that point still applies, right? No tra yeah, no research cards. I mean that that kind of makes sense because uh, um, customizable cards took up that that design space for this box. Speaking of customizable cards, we got one here, Honed Instinct. It's a rogue card. It's a rogue event. 
One cost, Gambit. Customizable, fast. Play after one of the following conditions is met. The agenda or act advances. You succeed a skill test by three or more. Immediately take an action as if it was your turn. Add the following play condition. You take damage and horror. Add the following play condition. Location enters play is revealed. Add the following play condition. An enemy engages you. Add the following play condition. A treachery enters your threat area. Add a following condition. You play an asset. During the action granted by Hone Instinct, you get plus two to each of your skills. You may include up to three copies of Hone Instinct in your deck. Hone Instinct gets minus one cost. Um, when you play Hone Instinct, you may take two actions instead of one. Then remove it from the game. Uh, so chat, for when it's after the condition is met, so when it says the agenda or act advances, is it flipped when it's, so it's then flipped when, like after the card flips and everything resolves. So like when the boss shows up, you can take an action against the boss, right? Is that how it works? Yeah, it's flipped and everything has been resolved. Okay. That obviously makes it a lot better. The last thing, and then the agenda card says advance the agenda. That's wild. I have no idea about that. It's not even in my brain. That's really neat. Um, you really don't need any of those extra conditions. I can agree with that. Yeah, impulse control seems wild. Sharpen talent also seems good. Force of Habit obviously seems nice as well if you're not planning on cycling through your deck. Uh, different conditions can depend on the investigator. Like, for example, what Tyler said, muscle memory with Bob seems kind of fun. <laughs> seems kind of like a good time. I think the card's good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go... Uh, I'm going to give it a 3.5. I think it's a very nice card. I think it's just very nice. Should I give it a 3.3? It's a good card. I think it's I think it's sick. Speaking of sick cards, should we kick the hornet's nests? This card's cool. Uh zero cost event, gambit tactics. Search some nine cards your counter deck for a non-elite enemy and spawn and engage with you, then discover one clue your location and gain X resources where X that enemy's health value. <laughs> the card does so much! The card does so fucking much. It's so good. <laughs> it's so strong. It's so good. Oh my god. And for zero XP. Holy crap. Um... So, if we have to talk about a downside, uh, if you don't find an enemy, nothing. You just waste an action and a card in your hand. That's it. Nothing else happens. Uh, if we have to talk about the downsides, let's respect the card. Um, it uh, doesn't replace the encounter card you draw for the turn, um, but it is a fantastic level zero card. I think I'm going to give it... What else have I given a five? String of curses, empirical hypothesis. Breaking and entering two. <clears throat> I don't think it's on those levels for me. I'm going to give it a four and a half, but the card is obviously bonkers. The card is very nice. But I do think that it, like, it doesn't excite me <clears throat> like those other cards enough to bump me to that last bit of power. But the card is obviously really good. 4.5 from chat. Hey, chat, we tied again! Ooh, I mean, not tie, we agree. 4.5. 4.5. It's a great card. It has so much packed into it in one spot. Obviously also great in Zoe. It's a great card. Holy hell. Stylish coat. I have no fucking idea. Oh, this is the one that gives you plus one resource. Every time you gain resources from a card effect. Uh-oh! We went too far ahead, chat. <clears throat> Two cost, one experience. Takes up, a, uh, takes up a body slot, commits for a foot. When you gain one or more resources during your turn via another player card effect, exhaust stylish coat, gain one additional resource. 
yeah. I'm going to give it a three. I think it's a good card, though. I'm going to give it a three. I don't really have much to say. Uh, it's just, if you're in, uh, if you make a lot of money, it's really good. Uh, uh, obviously with high roller, it's kind of cheeky. You're making money off your gambling because you gain the resources with high roller. That's how it works, right? High roller gain resources. I'm looking it up myself, but I know someone in chat probably already answered this question. Yeah, gain three resources. Yes. <clears throat> um, also good with... Uh, watch this, baby. It's a good card. I think, I'm think i going to give it a three. I think it's just good. Yeah, that's fun. I, I'm very excited to play with it in big money decks. Because this is a card that you can very easily run five... Uh, sorry, not run five of. Run one of. Run, run it as a one of. Just draw it and play it. And your deck isn't fucked if you don't draw it. And I think that's just a really nice card for it. I think it's just really good. It's a fun card. This is a good box. This is a good box of player cards. Like, I, I, I love that the compl this is exactly what I said would happen. That the complexity was placed on the customizable cards, and then everything else between that was just really nice and simple and elegant, right? It's just a good, it's just a good one. Dirty Fighting. Oh, this is a sick card. This card's cool. It's, just, it's a great box of cards. I'm excited to play with them. Three costs, two experience, talent, trick, illicit. Uh, Rita card, baby! Oh, hell yeah, it's gonna be good in Rita. Uh, when attacking or parlaying or attempting to evade an exhausted enemy, you get plus two skill value. After you evade an enemy to exhaust dirty fighting, take a fight action against that enemy. Ignore the aloof keyword for this attack. Also very good in Finn. It's very, very good. It's just a very good card. Because it's dirty fighting, you are actually allowed to ignore the limit one per investigator if you want to play it. How is Rita fight with a one punch? Rita has three punch. Rita has three fist. Yeah, so she she can fight it. She'll fight at five with this after she evades the enemy. Um, this card, apart from being absolutely beautiful design, because they saw the twenty five automatic and said, "Let's go that on card for everybody." But, like, Rita was already at the point where she was really nice, right? Like, she was, um, the sweeping kicks, the stuff she got from Winifred, she became very good flex combat. I like her more as combat than I'd like her as flex, but, um, I think that it's gonna really open up Rita to be, like, Tasty Toast, I'm gonna say it, Okay. I'm going to say it. An A-tier investigator. I think this is going to bust Rita to the fucking moon. I think it's going to make Rita very good. Yes. I believe it. I think so. Why are you trying to evade an exhausted enemy? That is there for Kaimani. That, that is there for Kaimani. Yeah. This is just... She basically... So, like... <laughs> she gets a, she gets the damage from her evade ability. And then she gets an additional action to fight with it. And then also, like, with a certain... Quote-unquote, maybe, baseball bat? she's It's gonna be good! Rita's gonna be great! I'm giving this card a four. I'm giving this card a four. But it says attacking. Yeah, well, attacking, evade, parlaying, or attempting to evade an exhausted enemy. Kaimani's ability cares about evading exhausted enemies. That's 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 with Kaimani there. So if you if you fail the evade, I think then you can just like you know you can also you can attack because it's the remaining health they have. I don't see how Rita can use this still. So you evade an enemy, and then you fight the enemy. You evade the enemy, and then you fight the enemy. Uh, 
All right, we've got a bunch of fives there, and I think that's very fair. I think the card is really good. 4.1. Chat, we're, we're really lining up. I'm sorry if my judginess got to you. But they have to be exhausted first. Yeah, but that's what Rita does. She exhausts the enemy. She evades it. What's next? Oh, Chuck Fergus. Baby Chuck. Uh, so four cost, two experience, ally criminal, two, two. When you play a tactic or trick event, exhaust Chuck Fergus. The event gains fast. The event costs two resources to play. You get plus two skill value performing a skill test during the resolution of that event. Um, this is what Brent and I were talking about, how um, there is baby Chuck, do, 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 baby Chuck. That's great, Tasty Toast. Uh, I'll, I'll go back to that in a second, Victor, to, to talk about that. But um, usually with Chuck, like, you're really looking to do one of the things. So I think that this... Um, uh, it's really good at the, um, for a lot of people. I think it's a good card. There's nothing really not, we know how Chuck works. And I think that this is going to be just a really good card. I'm going to give it a four. I'm going to give Chuck a four. Oh, the chat loves Chuck. I don't blame you. I think, I think Chuck's worthy of a five. I'm going to give him a four, but I think he's worthy of a five. He's a five in my heart, but he's a he's a four for my analytical brain. All right, so let's quickly just take a step back and look at this one. So the reason why Rita can use this card is because while attacking, parlaying, or attempting to evade an exhausted enemy, you get plus two skill value. So that is the top part of, that's one part of it. But then after you evade an enemy, exhaust, dirty fighting, take a fight action against that enemy, ignore the aloof keyword. So with Rita, you evade the enemy, and then you get to attack the enemy at plus two with exhausting, um, dirty fighting. So that's why Rita can use this. So we're doing the second part first. Well, yeah. Yeah, but then, like, if you don't kill it, you can just, uh... You can just always use the top part of it. So basically this card, this basically just gives you an action, but it means that you get always plus two when you're attacking exhausted enemies. It's two different part of the cards. Like there are two different things. There's a passive effect and then a reaction effect. And the reaction effect gives you an action, but you always get the plus two when fighting, attack, attacking parlay or attempting to evade an exhausted enemy. It's very nice. That is a good card. Holy cow. Trigger man! Trigger man. Do, 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 trigger man. Yes, I know, Chad. He can help you drink alcohol. Yes, yeah, that's exactly it, Victor. Four cost, three experience, ally criminal. After enters play, attach an illicit asset from your hand to trigger man is considered to be play under your control. As lightning bolt exhaust trigger man and spend one resource resolve an action ability on the attached asset. Without paying its action cost, remove that ability with a base uh, resolve that ability with a base skill value of four. Who's Leo? My name's Theo. Um <clears throat> So I was I was thinking about Charlie Kane. Uh, and I think that... I think that it's... Um, nice in him. Uh, some things that kind of make this a little bit less spicy for Trigger Man is that he, um, the, the thing that he's holding, if it's like a gun, it's in your hands still. Right? It does make up that you don't need to actually, uh, 
pay the cost of it, which is nice. Um, and I think that this, honestly, to me, I see this card and I'm like, this makes me feel like this is like good for a goon Charlie, Charlie Kane. Apart from like Liquid Courage and like even Lockpicks, like Lockpicks I don't think is great to attach to Trigger Man. Like it, you can spend a resource to take an action, which is like better than Skid. So like maybe it's worth it then. I think that overall, though, I don't think Trigger Man's that exciting to me, and it kind of reminds me of Quick Draw Holster, which I also think is kind of not great. So I'm going to give it a 3. I'm going to give Trigger Man a 3. Because it makes me think of Quick Draw Holster. That's how I also read it, uh, Super Fang. I believe that's what you're saying anyway 3.4 i think that's fair this guy reasonably could be a 3.5 and maybe my thoughts will go up on him before this time next year um but right now i'm, I'm not seeing it i'm not seeing trigger man the card that breaks my heart chat this card breaks my heart Zero cost, four experience, foot foot, clean sneak, gambit trick, fast, play only during your turn, for each not exhausted non-swarm enemy at your location, choose a different option, gain two resources, deal two damage to that enemy, discover one clear your location, draw one card. This is such a sad situation that um, both Finn and Rita cannot take this card. It's, it's really kind of just disappointing. But let's try to get past that disappointment and think about what we think of this card. This would be way too good in Finn and Rita. Let's be honest though, would it? Like, they can evade the same number of units, right? Like, they can, like... It, it's just evading. <laughs> like, they all, all, like, pretty much every rogue investigator can evade. I don't think it goes up in value if, um, I think the card, like, people are saying it's good. I don't think it's that great. Uh, apart from, like, situations where, um, you, like, apart from, like, the, um, cunning distraction is, would work with this. Like, apart from those situations where you're overwhelmed, uh, I, I, I like that it could just be, like, a good, like, killing spell. Um, yeah, it does seem good. Yeah, a good follow-up for Preston's Turkey Dinners. I'm going to give it a three. I think the card is... No, I'm going to give it a 3.5. It is fast. I just think that all, most of the time you're only going to get to do one of these things. Right? You're going to do one of the things and you're going to be like, I've done it. <laughs> I've done it. I'm the best. But it does have, like, a lot going for it. Like, even if this is just, like, another sneak attack in your deck that maybe can deal four damage. No, I'm going, I'm going to go to a three. I'm going back, I'm going back down. I'm trusting my, my, I'm going to trust my gut. The gut, my gut is the only thing I have in this life, and I'm going to trust it till the ends of the earth. Okay. Has chat said anything funny? Alright, chat. It's time! Do, 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 do. Another investigator. The last investigator we get to talk about. Put the duration to three minutes because I'm going to have to talk a lot more about her than other cards. Amina Zidane! Threes across the board. I'm getting covered by her going like this. Uh, so, she soaks for five and nine. And when you uh, soak is the wrong word for it because if she stops soaking, she dies. But when you would play an asset, reduce its cost by three. It enters play with one Doom on it, limit once per round. That's a very strong ability. That is, that's a very, very, very strong investigator ability. Elder Sign Effect, plus two, you may move all Doom from a card to your location to another card to your location. 
that would be great for locations where doom for scenarios where doom is not removed from locations you can really hurt your teammates because of that I mean, it's a Dane. Deck size 30. Mystic cards, uh, level 0, 05. Neutral 0, 05. Charms 0, 04. She gets Word of Wheel and Word of Woe. And then Deafening Silence. What are the good non-mystic charms? The best non-mystic charm for her is probably Dream Diary. And that solves her number problem. Lucky Cigarette Case also seems good. Yeah, I think the answer to her, though, is just Dream Diary. Like, you get Dream Diary, and you're going to the fucking moon. Uh, Word of Wheel. Fast. Play when you perform a skill test on an asset with one or more Doom on it. Add your brain to your skill value for this test. Then if Word of Woe is in your discard pile, you may shuffle it into your deck. Word of Woe. Two costs. Fast. Play one during turn. Place one Doom on an asset you control and resolve its action ability, ignoring all costs. Then if Word of Wheel is in your discard pile, you may shuffle it into your deck. Uh, and then Deafening Silence. Move one Doom from an asset you control to the current agenda. This may cause the current agenda to advance. If no Doom is moved this way, shuffle Deafening Silence into your deck. Okay, that is actually a, a kind of... That is that is a not easy myth, uh, uh, treachery card. That is kind of a little bit spooky. Um, I think that that is actually... That, that can be a little bit... That can be a little bit surprising and shocking and can actually really be problematic. Um, however, I think Amina's great. I'm very excited to play with her. I'm very excited to see what the community can do with her. I can definitely... Uh, at least it's not Agnes, which costs two and an action. That is true. That is that is a, a very nice change. Um, I think that she is obviously really interesting. Uh, I agree with what you're saying, Super Fang, where you can definitely feel the brain. I'm curious to see as the community kind of explores her more, uh, what you can do to mitigate that. Um, I am really ready for... Uh, I think the Dream Diary is going to be the first build I go with her. But she's an investigator. It's hard not to be most hyped about investigators. The lowest investigator I gave was a 4. Uh, everyone else except for Kaimani, I gave a 5. And I think Amina is no exception. I'm giving Amina a 5. It's just the right number in my head. Because she's an investigator. And Jack gave her a 4.2. Okay, on to another customizable card. All right, chat, I'm going to just preface this that I am unreasonably excited about this card. I don't think it's going to be great, but I, I'm very excited about Living Ink. So, Living Ink is a zero cost asset that takes up the body slot. Customizable. When you purchase Living Ink, choose a skill on this and circle it on its upgrade sheet. Uses three charges. Remove one charge from Living Ink at the start of your turns. If Living Ink has no charges, discard it. You get plus one to the chosen skills. Uh, circle a skill, obviously. Shifting Ink. You may play Living Ink under the control of another investigator location. Subtle depiction at the start of your turn. You may choose not to remove one charge from Living Ink and ignore its ability for the remainder of the round. Imbued Ink. Living, enter, uh, Living Ink enters play with two additional charges and take up an arcane slot instead of a body slot. Eldritch Ink, circle another skill. Eldritch Ink, circle another skill. Macabre Depiction, Living Ink gains after reveal a chaos token with a symbol. Exhaust Living Ink, place one charge on it. Vibrancy, Living Ink grants an additional plus one to the circled skill. And minus one to each other skill. Um, so. I think... Macabre and Subtle will be a must upgrades. I agree. If you're going to be playing this card, you definitely want Macabre, Depiction, and Subtle Ink. However, if you have two of these in your deck, you get to, um, you can run basically just zero cost, get three brain for three turns. It's still fine, right? Just get three brain for three turns. That's why Subtle, I, like, I, I would probably choose Subtle Depiction in it, but even in its baseline, 
with nothing else, just zero, get three brain for three turns in a slot that is not comp uh, competitive is not bad. Is not bad. Um, I really like um, Living Ink. And I think that... How are you getting three brain? No, uh, sorry, a brain for three turns. Three. I, I might have mixed up my numbers. One brain for three turns. Yeah, so I, I might have just mixed up my numbers because I, you know, uh, my I've been talking for an hour 20 straight. Yeah, so yeah, it's just like zero cost, one brain for three turns. Did I say three brain for one turn? Because that would be really spicy. But no, it's just, yeah, I think even that it's baseline, that's totally just fine. I'm going to give it a... Uh, uh, you said three brain for three turns? I just added an extra number on it. Let's go. I am going to give it a three, I think is the realistic number that I should probably give this card. Even though I'm very excited, I think that my hype can't... My hype can't outweigh my reason. I'm going to give it a three. Okay, we're back to regular cards for a little bit. We have... Oh, no. <laughs> Onyx Pentacle. Service error. Try again in a moment. Let's go. All right. Three cost asset. Takes up the hand slot. Uh, foot. Evade as an action. Either get... Use your brain or get plus one foot for this evasion attempt. When you initiate the ability, choose one. Exhaust Onyx Pentacle and place one Doom on it to target any enemy at your location or an attempting location and get plus one skill value for the evasion attempt. If you succeed by two or more, remove one Onyx Doom from one Doom from Onyx Pentacle. Two and a half. Um it's like it's a mystic evade spell i'm not likely to play it i i'm just unlikely to play this card i'm unlikely to play it Chat gave it a 2.2. That's tied with the lowest rated card I think that chat gave. Chat does not like the pentacle. That's okay. I don't either. This card's art is so sick. Explosive ward. One, two, three, four, five. Chat, how much would it fuck you up if I started counting five to one instead of one to five on the test? X cost event commits for two fist spell before you play explosive ward you may discard any number of cards from your arcane slots deal x damage to a non-elite enemy engage with you x cannot be greater than the number of empty arcane slots you have this action does not provoke attacks of opportunity um two damage two cost two damage if you're playing a no arcane slot deck if you're playing a no arcane slot deck that goes up in value like goes up um like the, it goes like you have to pay more can I can I be real though? Can we like talk for a second? No, 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 because I was gonna say is two is two resources two damage run. And it is sneak attack. Right? You can always oh, like two for two is like sneak attack, right? Because sneak attack costs two, right? Yeah, two for two Tesla seems quite reasonable. Yeah, I'm gonna uh, uh, two for two is totally fine. I'm gonna give it a three. Sneak attack needs an exhaust enemy. No, yeah, and sneak attack you still play. Like sneak attack still a good card. Yeah, I'm gonna say two. Sorry, I'm gonna say three. I'm gonna say three. Chat putting the twos in here. Brainwashed me. There's too many numbers going around here. Check it out at two point six. Even better in off-class mystics who won't even want to use the arcane. A hundred percent. I agree. A hundred percent. I think the card's good. I think it's a good card. For that non-elite still is burning heart. Yeah, but I think it's it's not here to kill non-elites, right? It's here to, uh, it's like, hey, I'm just going to spend two resources, kill the thing you're dealing with, and you can go do something else, right? 
Yeah, if you just look at it as just two for two damage with plus two fist when you like when the elite enemy comes, I think it's a good card. Hmm. Oh, it has to be engaged with you. It has to be engaged with you. Does that change things? Yeah, it does. I still think I'm gonna give it a three. I think it's I, I I think I'd rather run this than like Onyx Pentacle and like um the other two point fives I give, like the bolus, breach the door. Yeah, I'm gonna give it a three still. I, I'm still still there. Binder's jar, otherwise known as the devil's jar. Binder's jar. Two cost, one experience, takes up the accessory slot. You get plus one arcane slot for each enemy beneath Binder's Jar. After a non-elite enemy is defeated at your location, place an enemy face down beneath Binder's Jar. Limit two enemies beneath it. When an enemy attacks you, discard an enemy beneath Binder's Jar that shares a trait with the attacking enemy. Cancel that enemy's attack. Seal their souls into my jar. Not as cool as sealing their souls into... Um, you know, the skull. Um, but I think that it's not that great. I think it's just like, I think it's good. I don't think it's great, though. I think, though, that the dream of the card is better than the card. Right? I think, yeah, I think the dream of the card is better than a card. the card. I think I give it a three, but it gets extra point for the nice art. I think that's fair too. The art is incredible. I'm gonna, I'm also I'm gonna give it a three, but I'm not gonna give it an extra point for the art. But I think if you did give it an extra point for the art, I would not complain. And like, yeah, I think the the idea for this card is like the extra spell slots are really good out of it. And I think in that archetype, the card is generally better, right? Like in the archetype where you care about empty spell slots, I think it is like a four, right? Like, when you look at, like, how I talked about Press Pass, where Press Pass, I gave a 4-2, and then inside of the archetype, it would probably be even better than that. I think this card is probably a 4 in the archetype, but I think on its own, for me, it's just a 3. I don't think the card's bad by any means, though. Maybe I think it's a little bad. Shh. Don't tell, don't tell chat. Don't tell chat. Moonlight Ritual 2. Zero cost, two experience event, commits for a book, a foot, and a wild. Spell insight, play only during your turn. Remove all doom from a non-elite card at your location. It's also fast. It's also fast. Um, yeah. I mean, I think in the doom deck, you want this. It's any card, yeah. You can just remove doom from the, the bad guys. I'm going to give it a three. There's really not much to say about Moonlight Ritual. We know the card. We love the card. We've played the card in doom decks, and it's going to be good in more doom decks. Uh, and Joe can play it. Hell yeah, Joe, let's go. Can he play? You can do insights to two. Yeah, not Joe. No, I was like, no, he can't. I was like, there's something wrong there. I thought, I think Joe, he's uh, 0502, isn't he? Parallel Roland can. Let's go, Parallel Roland. He's going to do it. Um, I don't think it's worth it in non-Doom decks. And I think even in Doom decks, it's still just fine. It's still just a three, even in non-Doom decks. Three point two from chat. Three point two from chat. Huh. Okay, uncage the soul. Three. All right, zero cost, three experience. Uh, brain in a, a wild. You may discard a spell or ritual as you control. Play a spell or ritual card from your hand or discard pile, reducing its cost by three. Um, what I like about this card is that it makes your... Um, it's now good all the time for its text, not just its icons. Because Uncaged the Soul Zero had great, uh, has great icons, right? Um, however, um, it's... 
now its text is always relevant. I'm going to give it a three and a half. I'm not particularly like blown away by it, but I think the card is nice. It's a good upgrade. I don't think you're going to like run to the fucking like, you know, ends of the earth to upgrade this card early. However, if you um, have down the rabbit hole, you're probably going to just get to this one eventually, right? Um, and uh, I'm going to just say, yeah, this card's it's, it's a good card. I know why would you want to discard a spell or ritual beforehand, though? So you would want to do that. Say, for example, you have a brand of Cthugga with no charges on it. You can then discard the brand of Cthugga and then play the brand of Cthugga from your discard pile. Yeah, it's just, it's a recharge, baby. Yeah, or the asset has Doom on it. That's like the other, that's like the um, Amina tech, but I don't think people are going to be running to the hills to do that. I think it's going to be used more for reloading. Check, give it a four, which I think is also very fair, which I think is also just a good, I think the card's obviously good. Dowsing Rod, okay. We're in, we're at those cards now. Okay, Dowsing Rod. Four costs, four experience, book, book, hand slot. Either investigate, either using your brain, or get a plus one book for this investigation. When you initiate the ability, choose one. Place one Doom on it and move to a connect location. Get plus two skill value for this investigation. So you get plus three book if you're using your book. Plus two brain if you're using your brain. Um, if this investigation comes to the last good location, ready Dowsing Rod and remove all Doom from it. So... You move into a location with two clues with its top action. You exhaust the card, you get plus three book, you get the clue, you say, yay, I've done it. You can then use the investigate ability again, choose the bottom action, get the last clue, uh, ready it and remove all doom, and then you can use it again to move to another location and investigate a three book. Am I correct in that? That is how that works. What did I give the, um, let's scroll back up here. So, so I gave it a three. And what did I give the ceremonial sickle upgraded version? I gave it a three. And you succeed both, of course. That is, yeah, no, yeah, you have to succeed. Um, I think this card is good if you are able to use books symbols to your advantage. I do agree, it's better than Ceremonial Sickle, because clue getting is just better than killing enemies in the game. It's just how it is. We can't change it, unfortunately, because that's just how it is. That's so Winning the game is better than not losing the game. Uh, I think I'm going to give it... Why am I stuck on this one? I'm between... Like, I think, like, I think I'm going to just go with a three. I think I'm going to go with a three. I'm going to just follow a thing. It's better than Ceremonial Sickle, but not enough for me to, like, be excited about it or think it's, like, really poggy, if you will. And I will chat. I'll say poggy. Two point six from chat. Oh, no. <laughs> no! Oh, no. All right, three cost, two, four experience, foot, foot. Uh, hand slot, evade, use your brain or plus one book for this evasion. When you initiate, choose one, exhaust it, place one doom on it, and target any enemy at your location or connecting location, get plus three skill value. Um, uh, if you see by two or more, ready it and remove all doom from it. We're going back in time for a few seconds, chat. Like, we'll be real. We'll, we'll give the card some respect. We're going to give the card some respect. The evading at a connecting location can be a good ability. But I still think that it's kind of just a 2.5. It's just still... Uh, it's not what I want to be doing with my time in this game. 
As Stacey, Stacey Joe said a bet, if clues are better than damage, how much better are clues than evading? Oh my god, nearly exponential. <laughs> nearly exponential. This is it, chat. Your lowest rated card. 1.7. Holy cow. I think that's fair, though. Card's kind of not, not a great time. And I think that's just because evading, for, for experience to just evade better, is not really, like, what we get out of bed for. Okay, makeshift craft. One cost event. Uh, customizable use, uses two time. If makeshift craft has no time on it, discard it. Attach your location. Each nullet, not only animated attached location, gets minus one fight and minus one evade. <clears throat> At the end of the round, remove one time from makeshift trap. Improved timer. When you play, you may increase or decrease its uses by one. I gotta drink some water. Tripwire. Only trigger makeshift traps abilities if there are one or more enemies at a forced ability if there's one or more enemy at a tap location. Attach location. Simple. Makeshift trap gains fast and play during any lightning bolt window. Window, yeah. Time bomb, time bomb, time bomb. Poisonous. When you move one or more time from makeshift trap, deal one damage to an enemy at a attached location. Remote configuration. When you play makeshift trap, you may attach it to a revealed connecting location. Net. Not only enemies attached location cannot move or make attacks as opportunity. When makeshift trapped has no time on it and is discarded, deal three damage to enemy and investigator at attached location. Uh, I think it's a fun card. It's a survivor trap, so you already know it's not going to be good. Like, we just knew that once we saw the... Um, the the trait on the card uh i think it's fun i don't think it's like particularly great um i'm gonna give it probably a two i'm also okay with that i definitely am gonna try to uh blow people up with it and by that i mean me and my teammates i'm gonna put it down and be like i got improvised timer and explosive device and i'm just gonna go we go into the moon baby and i'm just gonna put it But I think it's a fun card. You know what? I I even upset chat that we have four fives here. Because I think the card is particularly uh, engaging. I think it's a fun card. And I'm down for that. I'm down for that. End of the road, chat. Not the end of the video. We still have a few cards left. But we are getting close to the end of the video. All right, zero cost event, insight spirit, fast play during uh, play during your turn only if the final agenda is in play. Draw one card, gain one resource, and gain one additional action. Remove end of the road from the game. So you basically hold on to these, um, and then you change them into a different card. You gain a resource and you gain an additional action. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> I think the card's good. I don't think it's like, like, I think it's very runnable, but I do think that I'll, because like, what does it really do? It gives you, it gives you two actions, because assuming you're going to hold two of these, right? And you get minus one hand size for the rest of the game. That isn't really a problem for survivors or people who run it, right? It gives you an, it gives you a resource. It replaces itself and you get two actions. Sucks if you have the survivor weakness. Excellent point. <laughs> um, hmm. Like, obviously I'm hyped on the card, right? Like, I think the card's good. The problem is, though, like, I've played a lot of Survivor. So, Aki, thank you so much for follow. Welcome to the, the, the table. The goddamn table. It's a pleasure to have you. And, like, I think this is obviously better. Like, Min will love this card, right? Like, Min will love the fuck out of this card because she's a seeker, 
right? I think this card is going to be better in off-class survivors, personally. Because I think that it's... Um, I think that it's a, a very good effect for the, like, those people. But, like, most survivors... Like they're, they're like they're not so much. I mean, they could scrap through it. But it is basically just I'm gonna take plus two actions this turn for nothing, for nothing, right? I'm gonna give it a four. I'm gonna give it a four. I think it's a great card. I think it's a great card. It's gonna be, oh, chat, we, we agreed. Another four. Fours all around the table. Pour one out for me and my buds. We both put fours. Shed a light. I'll be honest, chat. I thought this card cost one experience. And I was like, that's a really good card. I thought it cost one experience. And I was like, this card is fucking great. And then I saw it was zero. And I was like, this card's bonkers. It's wild. Two cost event. It's an inside trick. Commits for a book and a foot. Fast. Play after before. Play before revealing a chaos token during investigation you're performing. And only if the difficulty of this test is currently zero. This test automatically succeeds. You discover one additional clue at this location and one additional clue at any location. Um, five. I'm giving it a five. It's three clues for one card. Two cards because you need to have an old key ring. If only survivors played old key ring. Um, I think the card is good in any survivor who's going to investigate. Fucking Rita can play it. And she can use an old key ring to get three clues. Fucking Rita can do it. Yeah, any location as well. Yeah, Preston could fucking do it. And then there's also Resourceful. <laughs> and then there's also Resourceful to just bring it back. Card is wild. Survivor discur Recursion needs to slow down. Survivor Recursion needs to stop. It needs to stop. Yeah, this... Like I said, I thought this card cost one experience, and I was like, that's good. That's a good card. And then it wasn't. It wasn't that. 4.4 from chat. Daryl now classes any seeker in the game? Honestly, I think so. I think Daryl is going to be one of the best clue getters in the game. As I said in our list video that went up last Thursday, which at the time this video comes up was like three Thursdays ago, you can build any archetype for Daryl, and it's probably going to be broken. If you can also scrounge it. Ah! Oh my god, Dice Gods. You're 100% right. You can also just... I've actually stopped running scrounge for supplies. I can see this... Yeah, I mean, this is going to make me run it again. Scrounge for supplies is fucking nuts. Oh my god. Fantastic card. Absolutely busted. Lifeline. Do you want to be Stella Clark? Well, now you too can be Stella Clark. Do you want to be Stella Clark, but you are Stella Clark? Be better, Stella Clark. One cost, one experience, fortune, max, one per turn, fast. Play when investigator's turn would end. That investigator may take X additional actions during their turn. X is the number of skill tests they failed during their turn. Exile lifeline. Yeah, it's a fortune, so we got to say get fucked, Rex. That is very true. That is very true. Um... Uh, this card is a neat design. I do think that this is a very neat design for a card. Um, I'm glad it exists. I'm happy to play it. Um, uh, I think that the... What this does that I really enjoy is that it provides a new archetype for Stella to take more advantage of. I, I've not played Deja Vu Stella... But I think I'd be interested in trying Deja Vu Stella with this card. Um, 
and just like you know try not to just build a traditional stella deck that i've played before i do think that makes it a bit more interesting and i think it's a fun card i'm gonna give it a three and i'm gonna give it a three i don't think it's particularly good i'm gonna give it a three Sorry, when I say particularly good, I mean like great. I think it's I think it's a good card. I don't think it's a great card. Jack gave it a 3.8. Exile feels unnecessary. We're from the game to be fine. I like the exile though, because uh Survivor, we want more exile cards for deja vu to just get even more juice. Cross must tell and cross takes this and still fails. You can go miss. You drop this. Try again. That's great. That That is true. Gumption. This card is pretty good, huh? Gumption. One experience. Max one commit per skill test. You may commit uh, to any type of skill test. Uh, while Gumption is committed to a skill test, that test gets minus two difficulty. Um... So Gumption, it's like better Unexpected Courage. It's like Unexpected Courage with like uh, a gun, right? That's what Gumption is. Because uh, it is giving you essentially like it's plus two, but it's minus two is better as we all know that. And uh, yeah, as Tasty Doe says, if survivors, if only survivors had a payoff for testing at zero. Shucks. Um, this allows me, this is what I said I would do. When I, when I had Exploit Weakness, I gave it a two. And I said, once I saw more cards, I could potentially change my mind. That's why the asterisk was there. I'm going to give Exploit Weakness now a 2.5. I don't think it's particularly great, but I do think it's a it's now a fine card that I'm happy to play with Gumption. G Gumption, on the other hand, uh, I'm going to give Gumption... Honestly, it's a card that you're going to play in Survivor until the end of time. I'm giving it a 5. I, I think Survivor's got a really good set. Even though a lot of them are fucking stuck with the dilemmas, right? Um, and the dilemmas are kind of just poopy. Um, I do think that um, survivors still are like... I think they're the winners of the box. They got a lot of good stuff. And we haven't even got into the best card they got yet. Because they got a good card. Holy shit, chat. You gave it a five. Chat, you gave it a five. five. Only five people voted and you gave it a five. Is it old key, th key ring three? No spoilers. No spoilers. Baseball bat two. Off, light. Okay, baseball bat two. Two cost, two experience, two fists, two hand slots. Twos all the way down. Wow, oh my god. If you fight, fight, you get plus two for this attack. This attack deals plus one damage, so it deals two damage. What the fuck? If one of two tokens are revealed, you get to choose one of two options? Oh my god, chat. Twos all the way down. This is like the number 23. But the number two. Um, so, uh, you can either return it to your hand after this attack, or it deals plus one damage, and then you discard it after the attack. Uh, card is good. Uh, I think the card is a very nice option. It, sh it says choose one instead of choose two, though. Yeah, but it's choose one of two, I'm implying. I'm inferring. Um, I will give a four, which is really two twos. Designed in 2022. Oh my god, chat, we have to stop. We have to stop. Um... If only they changed the art to the be a baseball player with a jersey number two, that would have been hilarious. That would have been good. Uh, I'm happy to see more survivor weapons. Every survivor weapon that is produced just goes and further makes my opinion true that Daniela is a better fighter than Mark Harrigan. I've said it, chat, and I'll say it again, goddammit. I'll say it again until the end of time. Um, I think I'm going to give this card a three and a half. I think other weapons outclass it. I think it's a good card, though. I think it's a good, if not very good, card. Four 
4.2. Two B's and L's in baseball? You gotta stop. I'm gonna... My, my wife's gonna get home and I'm just gonna have to paint it a big two on the wall. Proof Justice is immortal. I'll say it to the end of time. I'll say it to the end of time. I'm gonna say things until the end of time. I'll do it. Katya Eastbank. Otherwise known as the Dilemma Ally. Dilemma Ally. Dilemma Ally. Two arts for it? Stop. And two A's? We gotta stop, chat. We gotta, we're gotta. we talking about Katya now. We have to leave the conspiracy theory behind us. All right. Three cost, two experience. Keeper of esoteric lore. Commits for a brain in a book. Takes up the ally slot. Uh, soaks for two and two. Anyways, when you draw a non-weakness card from the top of your deck before resolving any effects, exhaust her and place that card beneath her. Limit five cards beneath her. Draw a new card to replace it. As an action, you can draw any card beneath Katya. Um, I think that uh, it's obviously for the dilemmas. And also, yeah, Patrice would enjoy her. Um, it's fine. I think, obviously, I think she's going to be best in Dilemmas. I think I'm going to give her, uh, realistically, a 2.5. I think she goes up in Dilemmas, but overall, I'm not that excited about her. She's kind of just here. She's kind of just here. I do like that she gets called out by name in the FAQ in the rulebook, though. Okay, chat. It's time. It's time for us to look at the card while why, why scavenging will get tabooed one day, probably. <sighs> okay, so I, uh, I should read the card for people watching at home. One cost, three experience, double book, takes up a hand slot, uses three keys, so you get an extra key. If there are no keys on it, discard it. Thank God. Investigate. Your location gets minus two shroud for this investigation. If you succeed, remove one key from old key ring, and if this test difficulty is zero, you discover one additional clue. Um, so, it's a really good card. It's very good. Um, I think that it... Old key ring, in and of itself... Um, is a good card. Like, Old Key Ring, if your deck is investigating, it goes up. It, like, it's going to live from Scenario 1 to Scenario 8, right? Um, if you then upgrade to this better version, which gets you an additional investigate, but then also, like, on the locations where you need to pass this test... Or like, or like, sorry, on the locations where you are cheating and doing a two shroud location, it becomes even better. I will say that I don't think this card. Yeah, and also has flashlight three, because yeah, flashlight. Honestly, and then flashlight three. Oh, I was gonna say I don't know if this card is as good as shed a light, right? Like, I don't know if this card is as good as, as Shed a Light is. I think Shed a Light is just... I don't want to live in too much of a Magic Christmas land where you always have this and Shed a Light in your hand. Shed a Light does get more gooder with this. It is true. It does become more gooder. There's no denying that. Alright, I'm going to get I'm gonna get Chat's number in as I continue to mull over my number. Four point six from chat. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna be bold. I think flashlight. I think old key ring zero is a four. This is a five. It's just it's just really good in a class that doesn't care about this. 
Um, so I think it's this is so smartly XP costed. This is so smartly XP costed because it um, it Min can't use it, right? Min can't use this card. Thank fucking God, right? And also, like, this is just for survivors. It's really good for survivors because also, as Tasty Toast says, quick learner. Just quick learner makes it now your last action for Shroud get two clues, right? And Lola. This is very good probably for Lola, too. Lola got a lot of juice in this set for sure. In the survivor side, anyways. Um... 3XP is also the point where I'd consider one copy of a card instead of two copies. No, you're going to want two copies of Old Key Ring. The card's very good. <laughs> the card's very good. You're going to want two copies of Old Key Ring. Um, yeah, I think it's a great card. I might be hyped, overhyped for it. Like, it might reasonably just be a 4.5. Same with Shedalite. Like, Gumption might be the only true Survivor 5. And I do think that, I'm pretty confident that Gumption is going to last until the end of time. I don't know so much about these ones, but um, I'm not a hundred percent if I'm like if I'm like being overhyped and like a four point five might be more reasonable for old keyring, but I am confident enough to at least say this right now. I do think this is five, and I'm curious to see after gameplay how I feel about this card next year. Gonna log my glass of water chat. Give me a second. As I log this glass of water. Make sure you're staying hydrated, chat. Okay. Last survivor card. Fickle Fortune. All right, three, co three experience, dilemma, uh, revelation, place one doom on the current agenda, each investigator heals three damage and three horror, remove one doom from the current agenda, each investigator takes one direct damage and one direct horror, remove fickle fortune from the game. Yeah, the art's fantastic. I think this is one of the best Arkham arts we've seen. Um, I think that this is probably one of the best dilemmas, right? It's probably one of the better dilemmas. Um... It is a Vincent Carolyn card, isn't it? Does heal horror and damage. Honestly, every investigate. It, I mean, I mean, it does like seem kind of like an auto include for them, doesn't it? Like, isn't this just kind of like an auto include with Daryl with, with the sorry with Vincent and um, Carolyn? Because, like, you can just heal the damage in horror? Are dilemmas a thing you can sprinkle in, or are you making a dilemma deck? I think that, um... That some dilemmas <clears throat> are always good. And I think this is one that is always good. Um, I do think that... <clears throat> excuse me. And I think that there's others that are, like, part of the Dilemma deck. Yeah, when you resource float, it happens immediately, yeah. I'm gonna give it a 3.5. I think it's a very good, I think it's a very good card. I don't think you can play all the Dilemmas in the same deck. You could. It, yeah, it would just lower the value. And you'd probably whiff a few times. But I think realistically you're not going to draw more than two dilemmas a turn. Like, you're a survivor. Your card draw is probably not fucking good because you're a survivor. <laughs> a nice subtle thing about the dilemmas is that it keeps your hand low for low hand survivor if you want to be that person who, who does that. All right. This is the hyperphysical shotcaster. Otherwise known as the gun from control. 
Four cost, takes up a hand slot. Fits for a wild. Customizable, four Aether. If it's, it's Shockcaster, there's no Aether, discard it. Spend an Aether, resolve the manifest ability of the hyper-physical Shockcaster's current form. Exhaust it and change it to one you've unlocked on its upgrade sheet. Rail Shooter, fight with any skill, plus one damage. Telescanner, investigate with any skill. If you succeed, discover clue at any reveal location instead of your location. Um, Translocator, Hyperphysical Shockcaster has this form. Evade, attempt to evade using your any, with any skill before uh, or after this uh, attempt. You may move an Investigator or Anomaly enemy location to a magnetic location or vice versa. Reality Collapser, test any skill three. If you succeed, discard from play a non-weakness treachery that is not attached to an elite enemy. Matter Weaver, choose an asset in your hand and test any skill X, where X is that access, asset's cost. If you succeed, play that asset at no cost. Uh, it comes with two additional Aether for Aetheric Link and then Empowered Configuration. While using Manifest Ability, you get plus two skill value. So I don't think this card's bad, but I don't think it's great. I don't think it's even, I think it's just like good. I think it's just a good card um, for solo play. I think it becomes actively not good in um, three or more players. It's fine, I think, in two players, but I think it becomes actively not great beyond that. I could see it in a flex deck, yeah, for sure. But even then, I think there's just better things you can do. Because this doesn't really, like, the only thing this expedites is damage, right? And that's because it has to. Because it doesn't expedite your clue getting potential. Which as a flex, you can do that better than this card. Um, I am going to give this card a 2.5. I don't think I'm ever going to play this outside of a, a joke deck once. No, currently the only way to, re to replenish it is replaying it. Yeah, and I think I think there's a reason why it's Aether. Yeah, the Ghastly Possession can refill it. But yeah, there's a reason why it's Aether. So it's not like... I mean, it's Clue Anywhere, so it stops you from needing to move. It's a Clue Anywhere, which stops you from... But I think that's, like... It is true. That is true. Like, that's 100% true. But most of the time... Yeah, you gotta, like... You, you're getting clues where you want to get clues 90% of the time in this game. Um, I think it's... Honestly, though... You know how I said earlier at the start of the game? At the start of the video? About Carson Sinclair? Back into ages and ages and ages ago um this is a card that i think is great for solo play and i'm glad that it was designed for solo players i think the design is a little much i think the design is a bit over the top it's very crazy it's kind of like there's a lot to it um but I, and I think that it actually is exactly what I said didn't exist, or a card that gets worse when you scale it up to more players. And I actually think I gotta, I gotta give a little, like, props to the design there for, um, at least that part of it. This, this is a card that I think was a thing I said earlier that probably would be hard to do, and I think they did succeed in that here. I, like I said, I do think that this is over-designed, but I do think it was a successful design for true solo play. Remember how people worry that customizable cards are taking design space that may have been broken out into more cards? I think this card is the only one that leans on that for sure. On that, on that for you. I agree. That I would agree with. That I would agree with. Real fine. All right, chat. Just so you all know, don't get mad at me for this, okay? Don't get mad at me for, for this. Three cost event, brain and a foot, supply and double. Additional cost to play refine, spend an action. Immediately mark a checkbox on your upgrade sheet for a customizable card you own, even if it's not in play. Max once per game for each investigator. Um, I think this card is bad. I'm not going to play it. Even if I'm playing customizable cards. Uh, because three resources and two actions is a lot. 
In comparison to that, we love Delve Too Deep because it gives everybody experience. Um, I'm going to give this one a 1.5. I am, do not like this card. I think it's actively bad. Yeah, I think it's actively not... I, I, I'm, so, I'm honestly... I'm so glad that they costed it the way they did because it's... Um, it's... People can play it if they want to, but it's not a for sure you have to play it. Yeah, I don't think... This card does not make me... This card does not bring joy, and I think it's my least... I think it's the card that I, I'm like the least hyped about in the set, and I I, I don't want to play it. And I like I said, but like uh, this could be something where I in the future can look back at this and be like, oh, now I run refine all the time. But just three cost and two actions is a lot for one check mark for one experience. I, I will say, I think, uh, so both Will Hegwood and then also uh, D. Scarpack said in chat that this is probably best in Rogue. And I agree. This is probably best in Rogue, right? Or Guardian Downtime. But it's still three resources. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of cash. Okay, Flashlight 3. The last card, chat. The last card. And what a card it is. It's not free XP though. It it's it's not free. It's three it's three resources and two actions. That's about on par with how um, uh, a seeker can clear out a, a victory location. So it's not free. It's not free. It still requires actions and resources. More free than delve. I would say. Mm, great question. More free than delve. No, though, because, like, Delve is, like, pretty free. You just do it near the end. Um, but, like, Delve is, like, one of those things that... Especially, like, we learned how to play better. I think this one doesn't really have that, like, thing. Far less volatile than Delve, yeah. Um, and then you... But the thing about Delve, what makes Delve good is that it helps everybody, right? It helps everybody at the table. This doesn't. This helps just you for two of your actions and three resources. That's why Delve is played. And why I won't play uh, Refine, personally. Alright, Flashlight. Two cost, three experience. Commits for a book and a foot. Uses four supplies. as a reaction. When you perform a skill test while investigating or attempting to evade, spend one supply. This test gets minus two difficulty. Flashlight, eat your heart out. You're a great card. I'm giving you a four. It's a great card. Absolutely great. And chat, give it a 4.6. Time to doubt in the rabbit hole flashlight? Hell yeah. Okay. Well, that's it for these. But let's kind of do some fun looking. Is there an easy way for me to do this? There probably is. If I go like this. Okay. And then I can add... Here, one second. I'm just going to pause the YouTube video. Have I played with any of the cards yet? No, Canada has not seen the boxes come in yet. Now do the average of the scores? Sure. Should just be Oh no, I can't I can't use the equal key. Oh, how do you do average? What's the what's the thing again? Oh, you actually have to spell average. Okay.
my shortcut keys they have uh the uh they're for this okay let's take some decimal points out of this oh chat <laughs> chat do you see what you got do you see what i see nice nice all right, so my lowest rate is definitely refine. Mine is definitely refine here. Uh, your lowest rated is definitely Onyx Pentacle 4. That is the lowest that we have. Chat's highest rate is, I'm pretty sure, is Gumption. Because that's the only one that, like, only, like, four people voted on and it became a 5. I think before then, you had, like, a 4.7 somewhere. You had a 4.7 on... Astral Mirror was your next highest rated card for chat. I'm very, um, I'm very excited that I did this because Guard Dog 2, oh yeah, Guard Dog 2, did I also get a 4.7? He's up here. Yeah, 4.7. Um, I think that's a, uh, I'm very excited for this because as I said at the start of the video, one of the things I want to do most when I play Arkham is how did you guys know you guys just there's a 4.8 there it is chuck fergus good job chuck look at that uh, i forgot about chuck fergus honestly he's not even in the box for me but uh one of the things i like most as i said at the start of the video is um is seeing how my thoughts on opinions on cards change as i get experience with them and play with them and i'm very excited uh to in august or September next year to review all of these and give new ratings. So there will be two more like four hour, two hour long videos. So there's going to be like three hours, four hours more content coming your way next year. Holy cow. Where we're going to be looking back at these and then chat. You also can vote and get your stuff in there. And we're going to see how things may or may have not changed since then. I hope you had a great time watching this because I had a great time recording this. And I also got to say a huge thank you to all of our patrons for supporting the channel, uh, as well as everybody who watches us live on Twitch and not live on YouTube, and the people who like, subscribe, and leave comments and talk in our chat. Basically, there's tons of ways to support our content, and we appreciate everyone who supports their, our content in any way they can. If you do want to go to the next level and support our Patreon channel, you can find a link down in the description. Otherwise, keep commenting, keep liking, and keep watching us on YouTube and Twitch. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one. And as always, a GG's.